Hello everybody, welcome. My name is Richard here at RSEV and we specialise in selling used electric vehicles. So uh, it's time to run through a bit of a roundup of where the market's been over the last couple of months, July and August, the summer holidays. It's been a bit of a strange time. Some cars just aren't selling, some prices are falling, some aren't doing too bad. How is EV demand? What is happening in the used car market? So uh, as ever with these kind of videos, what I'm going to do is run through a bit of our own personal experience, but actually then pull off data from uh, Auto Trader Market Insights, the biggest used platform platform in the UK so we get some really good data off that so not just my interpretation but actual factual data about what's happening in the used car market uh, and I'm also going to share there's a, some extracts from a bigger report uh, that's produced by Auto Trader as well recently about uh, the future of uh, EVs are we on target to meet the mandate for 2035 uh, how are new cars selling how are new EVs selling what's happening in the market as well so we're going to round all that up as quickly as I can in this video to try and keep it brief. I'm going to throw a load of numbers at you, so I hope it's okay. Uh, I might just tag on at the end if we have time, a bit of our solar update, but I might just put it in another video because I'm going to really dig into the market. Personally, we've found that the last couple of months have been pretty quiet. Summer holidays can be a bit of a strange time, plus we had the election, plus there's the Olympics. Loads of stuff going on, riots around the UK. Uh, but in terms of us and sales, July, August wasn't particularly good. It was quite quiet. It can go like that in some holidays sometimes, but there was definitely a dip in the market, a lull in sales, and some cars just weren't selling. So what's the reason for that? Well, particularly with some of the testers, and I'll come on to that in a minute, uh, we found a big difference in Tesla Model Ys, uh, but Tesla have been offering 0% finance, and even now they've started up the referral scheme again, so you can get £1,000 off if you use a referral code. And I will put my referral code in the comments below. It is back, so you can get £1,000 off if you click on that link and order your car through that. But what's the market have been doing? I'm saying it's been quiet. Let's have a look at the data. So hopefully here I can bring up a screen recording that I've got here. And this is the background from Auto Trader that we see. And what I'm looking at in the middle of the screen here is that electric car market health is plus 6%. Others are actually doing better. Now, market health is what I look at because that's the balance between uh, supply and demand. So you can have, and if I go into this a little bit more details, go to electric and we scroll down here, we can see there's been a definite dip in market health. So what is market health? Well, you see here, it's a sort of the balance between supply and demand. You can have really good demand, as we've got there, actually 52% up uh, year on year, demand for used electric cars. Uh, but if you've got lots of supply, it can create a dip even so. So where people say, Used EV prices are crashing, nothing selling, uh, etc. No one wants EVs, you still see the headlines. Well, not true. Uh, demand, look, 52% up year on year, but its supply is up as well. So we've just got more cars in the marketplace now. Of course, it's saturating more and more, and more and more cars come off leasing companies and such like, but demand is up 52%. Now, if I go back and look at how demand for, say, diesel or petrol is, let me clear that filter there. And we'll see how that compares directly. So let's pick on diesel. Although it looks like a 13% market health, uh, demand is actually down 10% there. So EV demand is really good. It's just that there's more around now. So let's also have a quick look at petrol. I won't go through every single thing. I'll be here for ages. Sort of thing I do do in the background, but uh, demand for petrol 5% up, so that's not so bad. Um, but you can see as I've been on diesel and petrol, everything's had a little bit of a lull in this kind of uh, July and August period, but then increasing again now. So again, I can take for that. It's not just electric cars that have had this quiet time in July and August on the used market. I think the new market also is reflective of that, and that's in a bit of the auto, the auto trade report in a minute. Uh, so let's start drilling down a little bit more because although we can see electric has dipped and it's now coming back up in market health, demand is good, but there is supply, but that is falling. So here are signs that demand recently, last couple of weeks, is increasing, but the supply is falling, and that's good for stabilizing the market and keeping prices steady. And what I can say, as I record this now, which is 10th of September, this week and the end of last week has been really busy. Everyone's gone back to school and work, everything's resuming as normal, and we've been really busy. So uh, that's promising signs. But when I look here on the left-hand side of the screen, I've got um, uh, how different manufacturers are uh, performing in the market. So we can see some are red, some are green. This is market health. 
Uh, Great Wall Motors Aura, not very good at all. Wouldn't recommend buying one of those new, that's for sure. Uh, Tesla, not doing too bad. Toyota, terrible. Volvo, not so good there. But I do want to drill down to Tesla because here we do a lot of Teslas. They tend to be one of the foundations of the used electric car market. So let's just look at Tesla market health. Uh, and as you saw earlier, it's plus 5%. And here's that dip in the middle, reflective of the entire market, but increasing again now. Supply was also up in the middle there but decreasing again now and demand is going up. So that's all good signs for the market stabilizing. So now could be a good time to buy your used electric car. Now, what I was gonna say is that Model Ys have really been struggling recently. Again, a lot of people now, whereas Model Ys are always selling good, 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 good popular family cars. They've been struggling a little bit and prices have been coming down. Again, partly because tests have been obviously 0% finance, thousand pound off with referral codes, but that's partly because they're trying to get new car sales out there. They are struggling a little bit, again, across the market, not just Tesla. Uh, but with those promotions, it means a lot of people going out there more come onto the market. So let's drill down to Model Y, a little bit more detail here. Look at the market health there, just plummeting during July. And then August has seen, again, low, <laughs> not brilliant. Now, demand has been fairly steady, 50% up on last year. But it's the supply, look at the amount of supply. People are even selling their current Model Ys and going to get in a new one on 0% finance and such like. So uh, that's why Model Ys have dipped and there's some great bargains now. See Model Ys under 30,000 uh, pounds and then you've seen even long ranges for not much more than 30,000 pounds, you know, and they're good ones as well. You know, good, nice example, sensible mileage and they can take mileage well. So there's some good bargains out there. Now, one thing I did want to cover a little bit on this is um, with the depreciation on premium EVs uh, because I'm not going to drill down into all the data here, but just to cover, uh, people have seen, yes, Audi e-tron GTs and BMW iXs and Mercedes EQSs, a fraction of their new car price. And this is one of the reasons some people are a bit reluctant with uh, buying a new electric car because they're hearing of heavy depreciation. You've got to remember the biggest factor in this, and people interpret it differently, but the biggest factor a lot of people miss is that especially with premium electric cars, there's big incentives if a company is buying one for their owner, director, and employee to buy new because we have the first year capital allowance. And that applies to new cars only. So if you're gonna go and splash out a new car and you're gonna spend 100,000 pounds on one or lease one, then you may as well go for a new one and then take the tax savings that brings. What's the point in buying one at six months or a year old for just a little bit less? There isn't really any point because you can save more with the tax savings and buying a new one. So that leaves us kind of no man's land for the premium electric cars for the first couple of years, really, or until they get down to the private buy market, the cash buy market, typically more like 50 or 60 thousand pounds. And that's why you see two, three year old Audi Tron, Porsche Taycans, BMW Xs, Mercedes EQSs at mega bargains because the nearly new buyer just isn't there because they're nearly always bought by companies and they buy the new one and therefore it leaves some superb bargains on the used market for really nice cars. So um, some great options out there if you're looking at uh, premium cars, premium electric cars, absolute bargains out there. One of the staple diets of the uh, market is of course the Tesla Model 3. So let's have a quick there and we can see that dip in the end of July, but increasing and demand 61% up year on year. So the Model 3 proving itself really well um, as a good use buy at the moment because supply is falling, demand's up and the market's steadied out. And there's some brilliant bargains, 20 to 25,000 pounds gives you amazing, nice Tesla Model 3s and now plenty down even to about 15,000 pounds. We did a video recently about a Tesla Model 3 used and I bought that in the scene with 130,000 miles and the car was great and we sold that. That's gone, but the video is about what the car's like at 130,000 miles and basically very, very good. Drove brilliantly, no issues at all. And we did a battery health check on that as well. Uh, so what I also want to cover a little bit about in this video is uh, Autotrader also published a recent report uh, about the road to 2035 um, where we want to get more cars to be electric only. So I'm going to switch to a bit of a slideshow on that, but I'm going to skip through this. I mean, this is Autotrader's um, documentation. It's not mine, but I think it's only reasonable. I can probably pull a couple of little bits off to show you. So 
the progress of new car sales um, has been a bit flaky recently. The, the, they are increasing, new EV sales are increasing, but are kind of falling short of the targets that we probably need uh, to really get to because half of new cars sold by 2028 need to be electric and it's not quite there yet. But the interesting thing here is that um, because the residuals of electric cars has fallen, you know, they've been falling a lot recently, the residuals have been weak uh, over the first three years, um, it's been an unsustainable drop. So they are predicted to steady out. And there's also some data in here about how then that brings, because of high initial depreciation, it brings them into price parity with the uh, petrol or diesel equivalents because yeah electrics tend to be a little bit more expensive new not actually always but yes usually a bit more uh, but then if they're used a year or two years older then the same kind of price as a two-year-old equivalent car of the same category i found this like quite interesting the chinese entrance accelerating ev adoption into the uk uh, byd sales overtook tesla in q4 uh, apparently um, byd sponsors the euros boosted their sales must have spent big money, but it probably works. So this was interesting. Their research shows that 34% of um, uh, people looking at cars would consider an EV as the next car. Now, it'd be nice if that was a higher percentage. I think we're going to be always limited by those who don't have off-street parking. That's the difficulty um, with anyone who doesn't have off-street parking as they're charging the car. The dynamic changes completely, and it's not so suitable. So there needs to be some solutions for that. But as this slide shows and backs up the other slides I've been looking at is the demand for EVs has grown 54%. There are 63% more sales and the market share is growing. And look here, three to five year old EVs are selling rapidly, uh, faster than any other segment in fact from Auto Trader. Okay, so uh, I'm going to wrap up a little bit there from um, the EV market. I hope that's useful for you. Again, I'm trying to rattle through and summarise a few things, but in summary, there have been some further price shops recently. The market has slumped in July and August, but that's across the board, petrol, diesel, everything in the used market, but it's all picking up again now. Some great bargains out there, model wise and the premium electric cars, and it all looks like it's steadying off and stabilising very nicely. What I usually do in these videos as well is just have a look at our uh, solar production here and what have we got uh, i haven't even looked at this actually for a little while august is again when we all take holidays and various staff have holidays so um yeah we all take time off <laughs> but let's have a look uh so i'm going to look at 2024 as a whole first we've been 71 percent off grid and i think that's uh, reasonable because we've had a shocking year of weather um let's have a look in the uh, last month august we were 90% off grid in August, that's good. And in July, 91% off grid. Bear in mind, we're a company that has offices, computers, but are charging electric cars every single day. And in June, 94% off grid. So you can see, even a business like ours, fairly energy intensive, charging EVs every day can run off grid if you have your solar system. For those who aren't aware, we've got 62 solar panels, two Tesla power walls. And we installed this uh, coming up to two years ago now. Last year, it saved over £16,000 in our electric costs. The savings this year would actually be slightly smaller because uh, the electricity prices have come down. They're a lot cheaper. Um, so the savings are less. But you've got to remember, I haven't got to recover the cost of the investment because that investment added to the value of the building. So I don't look at it like that at all. But I know we had a, a great day uh, I think it was in beginning of August or July, where we produced like 170 kilowatt hours of energy, a huge amount, just off our own solar panels. And that would be enough to power our car to go from John O'Groats to Land's End. Uh, and we produce that in a day. So get in solar invested, especially on commercial properties where you've got nice big easy roofs to put solar on. Again, I encourage that as much as possible. Uh, and of course, for anyone at home investing in solar or even battery storage, both. But you can have just battery storage, not solar. That's what I've got at home. You know, just battery storage, no solar, because I've got a period of property, but it wouldn't look right. I'm not the first to admit that. But just having battery storage at home means I can harvest the energy overnight on the spare electricity that's in the grid, and it's cheaper. Take that, and then that's what the house runs from the day, and that was a good investment. That's been great as well. That saved me about £200 every single month. So uh, that's me. I have a quick roundup for this month. We've got some other videos in the pipeline. I hope that's useful for now. Make sure to subscribe. We'll see you in another one very soon.